Hi, and welcome to Native Life Fluency. In this video, we're going to cover the basics. Let's start at the beginning. What is an exercise? The structure of any exercise is the following. You need content. If you want to learn a skill, here we're going to talk about English, but even if you want to learn how to cook, or if you want to learn how to snowboard, you probably want to learn from the best. So the content you're going to work with is going to be produced by an expert in your area. Native like fluency is the practice of mastering relationships in the foreign language, in English, in our case. To me, native like fluency is all about being able to build and nurture relationships and to be spontaneous. Right now, I'm speaking to you without a script. I don't have a scenario for this video. I am spontaneous because this is what I practice every time I make a video. Learn from the best. What does it mean if your goal is native life fluency? It means that you learn from the source. Our source is all the native speakers in the world who speak English from birth. And then you can choose which native speakers you want to learn from. If you want to practice American English, you probably want to learn from Americans. If you want to practice or improve your British pronunciation or British English, or you live in the UK, you probably want to learn from native speakers who live in the UK. You choose. But if you want to improve your listening skills, if you want to improve your own pronunciation, if you want to improve how you react in English, if you want to improve the clarity of your own speech, then the content you're going to, work, to be working with is the content that you have produced yourself. It means your voice message, your text that you have written, the transcript of your video call with a client, or the recording of your presentation that you gave in English. If you want to improve your presentation skills, it makes little sense to watch other people perform. I mean, you can do so for inspiration, but to do the real work, to do the exercise, it's not productive. So first you need to understand what is it that you're practicing? Are you working on your own skills? Your learning skills? Or are you trying to acquire something external? Maybe you want to acquire the correct pronunciation of a certain vowel. Then you need to be working with a video where a native speaker explains how to do the mouth work, how to position your tongue, how to make your articulation organs work correctly. Maybe you're trying to acquire vocabulary, then it makes sense to work with a movie or with a live interview or with any video that you enjoy, maybe with a podcast episode too. Understand the difference, but content is number one. Number two is instructions. You need to know what you're doing. If you're new to this approach and to my website, I encourage you to join the community of practice and to see how every creative exercise is structured. You will find instructions, detailed instructions, step-by-step -step instructions for every exercise. Instructions always include the result. What result are you supposed to achieve by the end of this exercise? And then I show you how to achieve this result, what steps you need to take to achieve this result. Make sure you do not skip the steps. If you see 10 steps, don't think that, you know, I can go from, st from number one straight to number 10. No, you need to follow all of them. Instructions are important at the very beginning when you're learning to do the exercise correctly. Think about it this way. Imagine you want to cook something new. Maybe you've seen it many times. Maybe your mom has made it many times. Maybe you've eaten it in different expensive restaurants and now you want to make it yourself. So let's say you have found a recipe online or your friends or your mom gave you the recipe. And you look at the recipe and you go like, um, half of the ingredients I don't have. This is too complicated. I'm going to skip this step. And you know what? I'm going to do it my way. <laughs> and then you do it your way and the result is not the same that you expected. And you can't really blame the recipe. You chose not to follow the recipe and you got the result that was not actually what you wanted. So if you want to achieve what you want, please follow instructions. First, you need to follow them. When you understand how they work, 
and what you can and should achieve with every exercise, then you'll be able to modify and adapt these instructions, and you should. I want you to learn to create. I don't want you to learn to follow instructions here. I want you to do these exercises so that you can learn to create your own. This is the second component. The third component is feedback, a very, very important component. Honest, caring, human feedback. The problem of online education today and modern learning, I would say, approaches is that people do not get enough honest feedback or they get no honest feedback at all. Take any application that promises to teach you a second language. You open the app, you register, you click on lesson one, and wow, you have immediately earned one million points for doing what? <laughs> Excuse me? You press play because you want to watch the video in lesson one. Wow, you have just unlocked 100,000 points. You got 10 new awards. I haven't even done anything yet. This is how modern gamification works. They reward people for applying the minimum effort, the very, very minimum. You haven't learned anything. You haven't even started learning anything yet, but you have already earned a lot of achievements. And people get used to this feeling and they expect this feeling to be everywhere. And if they don't find it, they think that something is missing. No. The danger of this approach is that people never receive honest feedback. If they're honest with themselves, they will see that they were rewarded for doing nothing, for pressing play. How awesome is that? Really? <sighs> I find it very strange. Anyways, honest, caring, human feedback is an important component of every exercise. If you choose to learn from the best, <clears throat> ideally you want to receive feedback from the person who created the content or from the person who created the exercise. However, you can also receive quality feedback from another person who did the same exercise and was successful. How do you know they're successful? You look at their result. Feedback. A lot of people need to learn to accept feedback and to work with feedback. Because trust me, even though it sounds like a beautiful idea, a lot of people don't want feedback. They want awards. They want gratification, immediate gratification. They want to know that they're doing good. They want to feel good. They don't really want feedback, especially if it's honest. So you need to ask yourself, first and foremost, do I want feedback? And do I need it? And am I going to do something with it? Because the next step after receiving feedback is to process this feedback and to do another iteration. Basically, if you did something, you read the instructions, you did something, you received feedback, now you need to do it again. Because feedback is going to shed light on something that you haven't seen. And you'll need to use this information to do the exercise one more time. How many times you have to do it again depends on how you did it the first time. But you can spend some time here in this loop Action, feedback, action, feedback, action, feedback. I recommend that people do a number of iterations, but they need to know their number. You never want to do more iterations that you can handle. You need to know your number. My number is seven, which means that if I do eight iterations of a specific exercise, let's take reading out loud. I started with just 30 seconds of reading. Right now I can read for 20 minutes out loud, I can keep a very sharp focus. I'm not tired after 20 minutes of reading, so I enjoy doing more. However, of course, I read the same page again and again before I'm ready to record it for you guys because I'm learning to read it correctly. And I will never do more than seven iterations because if I do eight, I feel tired. If I feel tired, I'm not productive. If I'm not productive, I'm not enjoying what I'm creating and I don't feel like going back to this exercise. But what you want to create is this feeling that you look forward to doing this exercise one more time. This is exactly what you want to create. If you know your number, you know when you stop. I stop after iteration number seven. If I don't like what I'm, what I'm receiving, what I'm producing, what I'm creating, I stop and I tell myself, myself that I'll get back to this exercise later, maybe the next day, maybe in a few hours. Maybe I'm just not in the mood today. Or if I know that 
this is all I can get because I can do 55 iterations, but iteration number 56 is gonna sound worse than iteration number two, so it makes no sense really. If this is the best I can do today, then I leave it as it is. This is my maximum today. Tomorrow I'll do better, but today I did my best and I know it. You never want to get to the state where you start feeling tired and especially exhausted. Please take care of yourself. Take care of your inner state. You send your final iteration, you receive feedback, and when you feel that it's enough, this is the best you can produce, that's it. The final step is evaluation. Ideally self-evaluation. Of course, in the beginning you will need help. Somebody who can help you understand what evaluation even means. Because you start with content and instructions, what you need to arrive at is the result. Every exercise must be completed so that you can see your own result. You will understand the result of the exercise by looking at the metrics and you can understand the metrics only after you've done the self-evaluation work. Some metrics are going to be obvious. For example, I did seven iterations and last week I did 12. Or today I did three iterations and achieved the same result uh, as I did one month ago where I needed 10 iterations or seven iterations to do so. Or today, I heard 70% of what people said in this video. And two months ago, when I did a similar exercise, I could understand only 20%. Now I can clearly see that my listening skills have improved. Some metrics are gonna be obvious. However, there are gonna be a lot of things that are not so obvious and you can see them only if you do what I call guided self-evaluation practice, guided self-reflection practice. First, I help you as a coach or other people can help you, other community members who already are familiar with this type of work. And it, let's say if you're not participating in our group calls, if you're not a member of the Native Black Fluency Group and you don't have access to guided self-reflection work, um, I will write down the questions that you can ask yourself at the end of every exercise so that you can try to approach this task independently. What is self-reflection? It's, it's simple if you think about it. You answer your own questions and you find the answers to your own questions inside you, not on YouTube, they're right here. You just have to listen very carefully. Self-evaluation work requires some concentration. You sit down, you focus on these questions, and you do your best to answer them. And then you will know what the result of the exercise is. We do not only look at the numbers and at very tangible improvements. We also look at your mood, we also look at how you feel, we also look at how easy or difficult it was for you. We also look at everything, all the parameters that help you learn because you're not only improving your pronunciation or your grammar, you're also improving your capacity to learn and your capacity to cope. Every exercise is stressful because you have to move from something unknown to something known. You start working with a content that you probably don't really understand or that is simply new to you, you have never seen it before. And at the end, you need to achieve some sort of transformation. You watched it the first time, you couldn't understand half of it. By the end of the exercise, you hear and understand every single word of what people say and mean. That's the transformation. You start this exercise by not knowing what to write at all. You don't have any words. You finish this exercise and the result of your work is a beautifully written text, which is 100% correct and sounds natural in English. That's transformation. You start this exercise and you think that you cannot do this type of work because you've never done it before, you simply can't. By the end of the exercise, you look at your work and you go like, you know what, I actually can because I did it and I like what I did. I actually can. This is the kind of transformation I'm talking about. So make sure that your exercises have all these four components. You can absolutely create your own exercises, but I know it's difficult. And this is why I created the community of practice. I have been doing this work for almost 20 years. I'm a really good methodologist. I must say I'm a, I'm a very good teacher. I'm proud of that. And I know how to put the exercises together for every need of a student. Because I have 
continuously been creating these exercises for myself too and for other people, for many people, for many years in a row. That's why I know how difficult and frustrating it is for people to look for content, to look for the best content to work with, to look for the best exercises. And I know how boring and frustrating some exercises may look to people, especially if they find them in grammar books or in textbooks or on YouTube. This is why I do the work for you. I put together content. Uh, I, I choose the content for you. But by the way, you can replace the content with any other content you like. Just make sure that all the other components are there. I create instructions. I tell you what you can learn in this video or what else you can learn from this content. I organize everything. I take care of the methodology. All you need to do is you need to choose your exercise. You choose your exercise by choosing your focus. If your focus is vocabulary, you choose a vocabulary exercise. If your focus is listening skills, you choose a listening exercise. And the exercise that you will find will help you focus just on that, your listening skills. But every exercise will always focus on your learning skills. Any exercise you pick in the community of practice will help you become a better learner. That's by default. It's embedded in every exercise, and this is why I'm so proud of this work that I'm doing. The exercises that you do in the community of practice help you become a more successful learner. It doesn't matter which one you pick. Pick the one you like. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the community of practice. Leave a comment under the exercise that you choose to do.